Coming up next, we have Casino Coin, aka Couchman, with Metal Gear Ghost Babble. Stick around for this one. You're not going to want to miss it. You're going to see normal difficulty Ghost Babble from another Ghost Babble runner. This is Stay name tuned. Line two.
Welcome back, everyone, to TFA3 with Metal Gear Ghost Babble by Casino Coin, a.k.a. Couchman. Uh, he's going to be running normal difficulty here on the Game Boy Color. It's going to be a cool run, one that, uh, if you know me, I am in love with. And I'm sure Couchman quite likes this game, too, so... Transferring over here right now to Couchman. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Had a couple problems uh, setting up my OBS, but uh, should be good to go. Very good. And uh, today we are going to be running on normal difficulty any percent. And uh, is there anything you want to tell the audience about this run before we begin? Uh, not in particular. I'm sure I'll <laughs> think of what I wanted to say later, though. Well, you can always send us a note later on during the marathon being like, Hey, I just thought what I should say before that run that happened. And everyone's like, oh, nice, nice, nice one, nice one. All right. Uh, you ready, man? Yeah. All right. Just uh, you you give me a countdown since I can hear you, and then I will go when you go. Okay. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Good luck. All right. I should note I am running on the uh, Japanese version. There's no time difference between the two versions, US and JP, uh, uh, in terms of like the in-game time, which is how you rank it on the leaderboard. But um, RTA, uh, the Japanese version, is faster due to less text. Yeah, it's a big difference in a real-time marathon because we're saving around five minutes from the script. It's a pretty huge chunk, especially since this run is not, like, super duper long. Or, excuse me, it's not super duper short <laughs> compared to the other 2D games. Got that flipped. This is the longest 2D run by far. So, uh, one thing that's a little interesting about this first stage is that it's entirely uh, the same every time. Uh, there's no no adjustment needed. Uh, and everyone can get this world record in the first stage if you'd ever like to try. Uh, time will always be the same. It's a very simple strategy. Yep, you too can have a 035 and hold a world record in Ghost Babble along with how many people are we at now? This is becoming uh this is becoming a very hotly shared record in the Metal Gear community. We got let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. To the the IL board, but there's been plenty of people who've gotten 35 beyond that. Uh, so in that codec conversation, just introduced uh, a couple characters. Uh, we had Mei Ling and the Colonel. Uh, but the characters we just introduced are uh, Weasel, which is the guy with the uh, kind of scarred face, and then McBride, uh, who... He's a CIA operative. Yeah, McBride's our CIA contact, and Weasel is the one that's supposed to tell us about our weapons. We're entering the Fortress Galloway, which is built on the remains of the uh, base in Metal Gear 1. 
If you've never seen this game before, it is an alternate sequel to the original Metal Gear with a different story compared to Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. So, Couchman's going to be running on alert for a good chunk of this run. Um, and it's pretty useful since there's a lot of screens in this game that will, uh, as I say, scrub alerts or remove them. So running on alert at various points uh, saves quite a bit of time because the alert will go away pretty quickly. The only problem is, is that you have to deal with Ghost Babble cards um, and try to not get shot or knocked over. Yeah. Uh, alerts also open doors that you have the key card for. Uh, as long as you own the key card, you don't have to have it selected. It, the door will just be open on an alert if you have the uh, correct level of key card in your inventory. Which is uh, useful since doors actually take time to open in this game. Yeah, that is a small but useful optimization about running on alert. Um, aside from the benefits of taking better lines and not waiting for cameras and that sort of thing. So that long codec conversation we had uh, was with Chris, a Delta Force operative, uh, who was sent in before us, uh, but Delta Force got wiped out, so now we are supposed to make contact with her because uh, she's going to give us some information. Uh, she is inside of the uh, base, and we have yet to go there. So she told us to come in through the sewers, which is where we're going now. Hidden in a little alcove that uh, <laughs> you may have trouble finding if you play this casually and just be like, where am I supposed to go? There's a few times throughout this game if you play it casually, you're going to be a little bit confused or lost. But uh, thankfully, Couchman knows the way. Uh, Chris is going to tell us that she's going to wear her hair, I think, in a ponytail and a red hat. So that's how we know it's her. Right, so this screen here, uh, there are several different ways to do it. Uh, I have my own way of doing it. I think my way is own way. Uh, I know my way works 100% of the time, and I think the other way also works 100% of the time, but it's a little bit tighter. Yeah, it's uh, in some rooms in this game, the differences come down to frames as far as what's faster and what's slower. But not getting an alert there is really useful because likely if you get an alert on the first screen, uh, you're going to get knocked down on the second screen, which is that wastes about you know a second and a half or so getting knocked down. And we're coming up to a pretty key moment of this run, right? <laughs> So I've been practicing this, but uh, we'll see if I get it. Uh, I've been practicing the buffer list strat. So hope to God uh, I can get the right visual cue. Yeah, this is the water skip uh, where you have to time your movement to pass from one screen to the next while the uh, water wave is coming so you can avoid getting carried away by the water. Um, and it is a uh, pretty tight timing. Okay, that's definitely too late to get the second half. The first one is the most important by far, but the if you can skip the next wave after this, you'll save several more seconds, but the uh, frame limit uh, tightens as far as uh, being able to do that, and then your movement has to be really crisp to skip uh, both waves, but Casino opts to take it easy, and I don't blame him. You really just don't want to get carried by the wave. It's it's very annoying and wastes a lot of time. So, uh, actually, nice job there. You're actually screen transitioning, uh, if I recall, as the wave is also going through that the same zone, so you don't hit the trigger for it. Uh, it's very, very tight. It's a minor manipulation in the two rooms before past this. Let's see if I can get that. Just 
was here and get that guy to shoot. Or at least not punch me out. Yeah, this whole sequence on alert happens pretty quickly. And um, when you're running any percent, you have to be very aware of how to manipulate the guards so they don't attack you. Because uh, Ghost Babble guards aren't super bright. They will attack in whatever direction Snake is moving. So if you're holding down right, they're going to attack down right. And you abuse that a lot in any percent. Uh, my movement was a little tighter here. Uh, I could skip punching that guard out, which leaves me for a second. Uh, but I'm never confident enough to uh, just YOLO it, so... I always punch that guy out, because if you get an alert from that guy, uh, this elevator that you activate here, uh, you can't activate it on alert. Yep, at that point you're gonna have to wait, like, 15 seconds or something, just waiting for the alert to clear, and that's pretty annoying, so... I, I definitely... definitely don't blame you for <laughs> just being like, eh, you know what, the one second is not worth it. So we're coming up into the spiral. Um, very important that uh, you go the correct way in the spiral and not have to go all the way back because you took the wrong path on the fork. So luckily, uh, you know where to go, but since we're playing this casually, uh, you may encounter some problems. Let's see if I get a go. get an alert there, and then this next door will be open. Uh, didn't happen this time. Yeah, let's save a few frames since the door leading to the laser room will be open. And luckily, we don't need to worry about any laser shan here. Just run straight, so straight see, to the door. You can see Chris with the red hat there, just like she said. So, one thing I want to ask you, um, I noticed that you punch right before you enter a door. What's that about? Oh, uh, if you have a keycard door, uh, keycard doors take a second to unlock. Well, not a literal second, but they do, they take a little bit to unlock and open. So if you have the keycard equipped, if you stand right in front of the door and punch buffer once, uh, that is about the amount of time that it takes for the keycard door to open, uh, and it avoids snake uh, flattening against the door while it's still closed. And now we have the introduction to Black Chamber. The uh, four members, the four members of uh, Black Chamber: Slasher Hawk, Marionette Owl. Pyro Bison and Black Arts Viper, which I, I guess Black Chamber is named after him. <laughs> I don't so I don't know. Seems, it's like a chicken the egg so problem. <laughs> did he did he name himself after the unit, or did the unit name itself after him? So Chris He's tells really us the color black. Chris tells us that she has the level uh, what four key card or something like that. And that uh, she will open the doors for us. So, I don't know. I guess she couldn't just give us the key card, but uh, now we'll be following after her for the next little bit here. Uh, which is nice, because every open door in this section resets the alert. So you can use that. Yeah, I think it's because of the cutscene here that it just like removes the alert like that. Perhaps. That's very, very convenient, so we can just go on alert all the time and not worry about it. I pick up some chaff grenades here that I won't use until stage 11, which is a little far off, but uh, they're very, very necessary to pick up. Yeah, with uh, Ghost Babble, there's a lot of planning involved with the resource management that 
uh, pretty much everything we do from here on out, there is a reason why it's being picked up, and usually it's for end game purposes. I think our roots uh, slightly differ. I'll be honest, I don't know. I think mine's probably not quite as good, or at least not as safe, maybe, on the resource side. Uh, but there's little variations you can do uh, on the amount of grenades you pick up, type types of grenades, like stunts, and uh, you can get some extra chaffs somewhere, but uh, I don't pick them up, so I, I don't know where they are, but... Uh, that would be uh, stage six uh when you're before you pick up the r5 and those are really only for doberman since you use so many chaff on doberman normal so uh, i also have to say for the audience that it's a, a real pleasure to be watching this game in a marathon and not having to do it it's like <laughs> Not a lot of full game runners yet. Yet, but, uh, everyone, everyone's like, no nah, man, stage one, that's it, that's that's it, that's the one. But I'm sure in the future this will be the hot game. That's right. Move over, Super Mario Odyssey. Here comes Metal Gear Ghost Babble. <laughs> top, uh, top most popular game on uh, speedruns.com. Uh, that's right. So Chris is going to split up with us. She's going to go to the power plant, and we are going to go to the barracks. So she's going north. We're going to go east. Uh, now I'm going to pick up an extra ration here, just for safety. Uh, rarely does it matter, but sometimes you can get killed by dogs later in this stage if you don't have a ration. So just to be sure, make, make sure I survive with that ration. Let's see, what is this combination? Three five on the outside, all group. Okay, I think Position I. Mission two. I think I remember what this is. I haven't looked at my notes in forever, but I tried to memorize this, so it should be solution one three five shift 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 solution. And there we go. We got it. Nice. Yeah, so there are, uh, depending on which button that guard presses, that's going to determine the order of the buttons we press in an optimal way. To put it very simply, there's four different possibilities. I think it's safe and punch this dog out. Uh, there is a way to just get past it. Yeah, knocking out the guard, guard dog is the safest thing to do. You could do one punch, but you could get hurt, so. I think across these next screens, there's a bunch of very small optimizations you can do, and different strategies that are slightly faster, but perhaps more risky. Like there, I took a safe way that guarantees I'm not going to get bitten by that dog, but uh, if you just, like, YOLO run past a dog, it's much faster, but, uh, well, much faster. It saves a little bit of time, but um, the dog will see you earlier and can bite you. And if you have no ration, like, you could just straight up die. <laughs> and then your run is yeah. pretty much over. Many a run lost point. to uh, lost dogs. That, that happened to me a good number of times while doing any percent. Speaking of any percent, this bird screen is simple as heck. Just run up. So I got the extra rash. So we do not need to pick up that one. Because you actually have the maximum amount of gold that is currently just to... Uh, Here's Slasher Hawk. Uh, now there's a chance my game could crash here. Uh, it's very, very. Has that happened chance. to you on normal? Yeah, when I was in oh, Japan wow. doing practice runs, it actually just randomly crashed. So, you know, it shouldn't happen, but that's so weird. Okay, 
man, that makes me even more nervous. I thought that was because uh, I've only ever seen that happen on very hard, but this just happens straight up. So, uh, Slasher Hawk throws two different types of boomerangs. He throws uh, red linear boomerangs, zigzag greens. Um, and they always uh, return on his right or your left, so you want to avoid uh, the return of the boomerang. Then the second phase, uh, the bird, the hawk, uh, goes at you. And thankfully on normal, he's not super fast compared to very hard. Uh, you just kind of move along and just keep on throwing grenades at him. That's what the rations are for. I count, I do a count to try and get around his iframes. Uh, I think everyone might have their own count for that, but uh, it's, a, it's a non standard amount of times. Just make sure I get, uh, try and get the grenades in as soon as possible. If I recall, this guy's story is he was. Uh, He's from Africa or something, or maybe. It's a uh, aborigine from Australia. Or, or no, no. Well, the thing is, he he isn't an aborigine, but he was adopted by them, and they kept telling him that he wasn't part of their culture, so he wouldn't go to the afterlife. But he uh, he was eventually accepted by them or something, and uh, yeah, tragic story. Uh, you know, Metal Gear villains. Uh, <laughs> Tragic <Dragon>. stories <laughs> in Metal Gear. I've never heard of them. So I grabbed this yellow box. Very important. Oh, yeah, we could have picked this up earlier, but this is a more convenient time to pick it up. She grabbed those grenades out of order. Was I supposed to grab them while I was waiting for the elevator? seeing this elevator uh, quite a few times. That's right. We're going to be uh, taking an adventure. An adventure and box orders. Uh, this is a, a bit of an auto-scroller, uh, but you can speed it up slightly if you walk in the same direction the conveyor belt is going. We call this the box maze. see the little color indicators because they wanted to uh, use the Game Boy Colors uh, color capabilities, I guess, but um, I will get boxes of different colors and uh, I can choose which exit I go out depending on what box I have equipped. And we have uh, what can potentially be one of the more tricky movements in the game. Let's see if I get this here. This first drop movement. Alright, that's the hard part. Uh, that is actually very dependent on uh, when Snake turns. Uh, he takes a little bit of extra time. If you've ever played Dota, it has something like Dota turning. Uh, <laughs> My man compared Ghost Babble to Dota. Let's go. So, when Snake turns, uh, he basically pauses in place while he's turning. Uh, you don't really notice it because it takes such a brief amount of time, but it actually matters for that guard because if that guard uh, faces any direction other than uh, left, uh, he will see you when you try and run past in the box, the uh, first guard that you run past there. So you want to you want to be sure uh, because he, when he turns around to hear the noise, if he's facing any direction other than left, he won't have enough turn frames uh, to give you enough time to move out of the way. Uh, which was uh, not going down here. <laughs> the key card. 
That would have been uh that would have been a, a party foul. An unfortunate waste of time. And, and and not even just like a small waste. Any mistakes on this this conveyor belt uh area is a huge waste of time because you have to write it and like go back up, write it again. Uh you play the game casually. Well, everyone has played this game casually who has uh, this stage is just uh, a nightmare. This is actually my favorite stage. It has such uh, a large amount of execution in it. However, uh, it's definitely uh, one of the highest hurdles for getting through this game. Uh, yeah, it's got a nice balance between uh, you know, the auto-scrollers and then the movement is, uh, pretty tough. Um, oh, we didn't mention, um, elevator tech at all. This game does have elevator tech, so when Couchman presses the button, uh, to go up or down the elevator, he'll pause, uh, right after pressing the button, and that will allow the animation of the door closing or opening to happen. <clears throat> and the IGT will pause because he's in the menu. So you save a bit of time IGT by doing that. And over the run, that adds up quite a bit. Especially in this stage with so many elevators, you can at least get some of them. Uh, it's, it's good. Slasher, you grab stun grenades. I used to skip these, but I would convince them. Uh, in fact, quite useful. Yeah, even on any percent, they're they're too good to pass up. Let's see if I get this. This is the next tight part. Oh man, you still do this strat. Oh boy. Is there a different strat now? Yeah, yeah. You sit by the corner in the box and wait for him to get to the corner and you corner punch him. Dude, I'm in the past. Living in the past. Yeah, that uh, that strat. Oh man. Not only is it slower, it's so much harder. I was worried like, wait, why is he saying this is hard? And I'm like, oh no, he's still doing <laughs> this wall knock thing. Yeah, so the thing about knocking or noises in this game with guards is... They can look around while they're going to investigate a noise. They'll like peer, look left and right, and you have to be ready for that. So any strategy that involves distracting a guard, you have to be on your toes. And that is one point uh, you got to be on your toes, because if you screw that up, um, you have to hit, you'll... The elevator, uh, set the alert to run out for the elevator to be accessible, and it's, uh, it's a nightmare. Yeah, it's not fun. So yeah, uh, next time you uh, do attempts, you should definitely the, the, you just uh, sit in the box, wait at the corner until he gets into the position where he stops, and then you punch him. That's a it's it's faster and easier. It's beautiful. Okay, we're coming up on a uh, rather difficult. For some people, part, uh, and I may fail this, but uh, luckily this is one part where failure isn't really that costly. Um, I'm going to be doing a uh, dark room that has uh, everything's blacked out, uh, and it also has lasers, so uh, fun. There's a punch buffering strat here. I'm going to kill myself. This is to set up this dark room. As you can see, you can't see anything in there. I guess as you can't see, but... Right. At the very least, you can see your radar and Snake's model with all we need to uh, successfully punch buffer our way through this uh, laser pattern after you death abuse. 
but we have to do it as well on the way out. So I just, I just slipped on a corner there. Uh, corners in this game are kind of rounded, so you can you can slip off them. Uh, it's not too bad most of the time, but uh, if you slip in the wrong place, sometimes uh, you can get seen by a guard or knocked down. So you gotta be careful about that. So stuns are pretty good in this game. Once you throw a stun, everyone's just going to get knocked out. And if you throw a grenade along a wall, it blows up immediately. So you just throw it at the wall and boom, they're all done. They're down. And uh, that's... Uh, in terms of uh, safety, it's much better to spend the fraction of throwing the stun grenade versus getting knocked down. Once again, doing some death abuse here. Which, FYI, if you don't know, you can do this as well if you're going for rank 1 big boss and Doberman. Deaths don't count against you in this game on their own. Nice. So, I did thankfully get through that. Uh, and the reason you go through that in the dark is to skip uh, going here. You would normally come here first and pick up infrared goggles, uh, but instead you skip the goggles and go straight for the C4. Uh, that's them in the corner there, I believe. So here, this is our actually our main mission in the game, was to come in here and rescue this guy, Jimmy, who's the, uh, he created this Metal Gear in this game. But we were sent in to uh, rescue him, and uh, normally you're supposed to come in through the bottom uh, and talk to him through the bars there. But instead, we skipped all that and just blew the wall up. So he uh, was a bit surprised to see us. Uh, but he goes and tells us that uh, Metal Gear is actually finished construction. Uh, and now he's just waiting around to, uh, I guess, be executed or something. So it was a good time for Snake to get there. Uh, now the power goes out, making all rooms dark rooms. But uh, And this is to charge up Metal Gear, getting ready to fire Metal Gear's uh, railgun. A railgun, you said? This Metal Gear is... Uh, they said, uh, you know, one railgun is pretty powerful, but what would be better than one railgun? How about two railguns? So this Boom. Metal Gear... Two! One for each shoulder. And Jimmy just gives us the goggles, because I guess Kojima, or whoever was supervising this game, figured players might actually be able to get through the laser room uh, in the dark, so they make sure you get the goggles. So we have to go stop Metal Gear. It's going to take 30 minutes for it to charge up, apparently. Uh, lies, it takes much less than that time. <laughs> Oh, my strat here is a little different. It's probably worse. Uh, I believe throws the yeah. So that that's the bad downside to my strat here. I run and punch the guard. Usually he'll just look left, see you, and trigger the alert. But uh, the plywood throws a uh, stun grenade there. Which is yeah, I think that's uh. Yep. You use stun grenades. If you had the five seven, you could also use the five seven to cause uh alerts, but. Stun grenades allow you to uh, manipulate the guards fully and not have to knock on the wall, etc, etc. But these are little details. The doors are open, that's the important part. And thankfully this guard did not be mean. Sometimes that guard in that gas room can hit you. It's, it's uncommon, but it can happen. He has uh, shot me many times before. I always feel uh, that little lick of, lick of pain uh, when I 
comes to the boss, which isn't really that threatening, but uh, it has mattered before. Uh, so here, Chris calls us. She picked up Jimmy. So uh, now she has Jimmy, so he's safe and outside. A very short comic relief codec. Where uh, Jimmy makes fun of Chris, and Chris basically calls him a brat. So we're coming up to the second boss fight of the game, Marionette Owl. who uh, the gimmick of this fight is Marinette Owl hides among two dolls and you need to shoot Marinette Owl and not the dolls. The dolls have uh, the same sprite in the dark. Uh, so, or, or you can't, like when you, when you equip the uh, thermal goggles, they all look the same. But, uh, uh, I think we're uh, we're good enough players to uh, figure out which one's the real one. Also, the beginning of this fight has a, a beautiful uh, scripted uh, couple shots. Let's see if I can get them here. One, two, and three. All right, this is a pretty good pattern. Nice and fast. Yeah, Marinette Owl can throw several different patterns at you uh, after the start of the fight. Some of them are really good. Some of them, and uh, one of them is very bad. And thankfully, we didn't get the very bad pattern. I think that's the one where he runs around the edge of the room. Now, when all the dolls stack on top of each other, if he's oh, like going yeah. along the the outer edge of the room, that's a good pattern. It's when all the dolls come together and then they go in a. Oh yeah. Because if you like, if you like miss your last shot, like the third shot, for instance, like you got hit by the doll and you couldn't hit, and then they all stack together, you have no idea who Marionette L stack. And you can't even check either because. Uh... Oh, this, by the way, this is a trick. Uh, it makes you think it's the uh, same thing as before, but actually, you can walk through this. But, uh, but yeah, if you don't even have the uh, night vision goggles to tell which one is Marionette Owls. So here are mines. There's mines strewn all about this area. Uh, luckily, uh, we know where they are, but. Quite uh, time consuming. There is a mine detector. Oh, excuse me. Jeez. Uh, there is a mine detector in the truck just before this field, but uh, obviously that's slow, so. We just have to have the knowledge, which we do, so. No need for gear, uh, mine detectors. Your Metal Gear f actually fires a nuke. Uh, I don't. I don't remember if Metal Gear fires a nuke in any other Metal Gear game, uh, but it definitely fires one here. I think it lands in Nevada um, as a basically a warning. Yeah. This game's pretty hardcore with the story, by the way, even though it's rated E for everyone. Uh, the guards don't bleed. That's good enough. <laughs> they don't bleed. Who cares about the, the alcohol reference and all the references to, like, suicide and all the rest? You know, who cares, man? It's fine. There's no blood. It's all good. Snake doesn't smoke. It's a, uh, what is it called? It's the fogger. The fogger, yes. It's the fogger. It's the vape pen, man. Uh, the mines are back on the second time, and I did get unlucky and get blown up there by the, the uh, mortar shells. Uh, that's RNG, so you never really know for certain if you're going to get hit. Most of the time it doesn't happen, but... On rare occasion. 
rare occasion the game says, no, you're, you're, you're going to get hit. So here's a videotape sent by the general, which is our main villain uh, here, or he's he's the guy who stole supposedly the, the main villain. Yeah, uh, and I believe we're gonna get a call from Chris here as well, uh, where Chris and Jimmy get ambushed, and there's sounds of gunfire. worried about them, but they uh, aren't picking up. So we're going to go to the uh, power plant now, because we need to blow it up so that Metal Gear can't charge any more railgun shots. And here we get to the, uh, well, the beginning of the biggest RNG part of this game. Yep. This is, uh... The thing that weighs heavily on all full game runners' hearts, or most of them at least. <laughs> so, Casino's gonna be looking for pillar locations throughout stage 8 and 9, and uh, that'll be important for the next stage because uh, we gotta plant four C4s at exposed pillars throughout the stage. So he'll be checking at various locations, um, probably quietly muttering to himself, like, okay, that's not that. And pretty much everyone does it. And they're like, nope, that's not it. Okay, there's there's number one. You know, you have to you have to make it clear in your head what, what's spawning where. Uh, and you can lose up to I think like two minutes if you get really bad pillar locations. Oh, <laughs> It could so, be even uh, three, depending on if you're doing stealth or not. It's, you can get really bad, potentially. It's usually not that bad, but... We'll ugh. see. I don't trust this game to give me good pillars. Uh, one thing you do know is that if you do see uh, a pillar location, uh... On the same floor, uh, there can't be another pillar location on that same pillar. Uh, so, if you see it on one screen and then transition to another screen, that same pillar can't have a second pillar location. So we're coming down here into the basement to pick up a card so we can actually advance with the game. You need this card. Oh, nice there's check. Our first, there's our first pillar location. Uh, well, I guess I'm seeing it early, but... And I just got an alert because I forgot what I was doing. Uh, this is fine. Uh, it's actually fading way much faster than I thought it would, but... Uh, okay, and we got another pillar location by the elevator. So that's two. Okay... Guess I didn't wait long enough. Uh-oh. Well, my apologies. Yeah, I waiting I in just, here. I think I better just, There's gonna be uh, guards that come in. I better just do the uh, safe strategy here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And entering and exiting. Yes. That is the strategy. Because if you wait in that room, there's be a guard there, typically. And he'll be right by the elevator. Whereas... Just go in and out, and guards can't bother you. Anywho, we have the big major skip of this game uh, coming up. We're going to be skipping picking up the Nikita missile launcher on the second floor, which this saves us several minutes. Um, Couchman's going to uh, do a setup to uh, position Snake at the very edge of an electric floor panel and then a guard's gonna come by punch him and then abusing iframes he's going to uh stand up and move past the floor because it's only electrified at the very start of the panel the floor panel 
Now, although this is pixel perfect, uh, it's not that difficult to set up. And there's a position. So Snake's just going to chill out on the floor for a while. And there we go. I do apologize, actually. I'm a little early because, of course, I'm seeing the game feed directly on my, <laughs> my TV. Oh, it's okay. But uh, you get to hear my uh, uh, shouts of elation moments before the moment. Uh, or desperation. Uh, indeed, indeed. And they've got a bad guard spawn here. Uh, don't want a guy on the bottom there. So can shoot you in awkward, unless he shoots me here. Oh. Thanks, buddy. I'm just going to redo this so I get an extra check with that. Yeah, so we're trying to get the guards to uh, uh, shoot Snake, and then th with that, we'll be able to run past the panel during the iframes. Oh, thankfully, they are all just shooting rather than trying to punch you. That's good. All right, so here we come to third boss. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bison. Uh, he's pretty easy, because uh, unfortunately he allows himself to be stun locked. Yeah, we try to set him up in a certain position, and he keeps on counterattacking when you're close, and because of that, He'll just stand still, and as long as you time your shot based off his recovery animation, you can get an easy shot off. Um, thing is, like, even though it is easy, I put that in quotation marks because it is also easy to get off the timing and waste time from shooting at the wrong time. It's not too big of a deal because Casino has a stash of rations so even if he gets hurt it's not a problem but it can be annoying uh now hopefully uh not all of my pillars are in the basement <laughs> well or there are good there's some good pillars in the basement uh, okay so here pyro bison is saying oh ho how do you think we knew where you were uh you have a Someone on your team is uh, secretly uh, on our side, and then he kills himself because uh, he loves fire. Uh, goes out, uh, you know, doing what he loves. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's actually completely true. And now, every now everyone's suspicious and. Uh, some of them are throwing shade on uh, on Chris because she can't. Uh, she's not around here. But uh, we'll see. We'll see who the real uh, betrayer is. Uh, if this was Acid One, it would be Solid Snake. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, thankfully, I did not get the actual worst filler, so we're off to a good start there. Oh, I don't know. I don't. Did you actually confirm that that we didn't get vent pillar? I thought that pillar was the rash. Oh no, the no, that that pillar is not as bad. On any percent, uh, nah. No, vent pillar is still slower. Ah, uh, then we may still have the uh, worst pillar. <laughs> I was like, oh, nice. We don't have to crawl through a vent. That's great. Sign me up. Currently, only know two pillars. There's a third one, so three pillars are in the basement. Uh, regrettably, going to the basement is not what we want, but hey, what, what are you going to do? Uh, if we're really lucky, the last pillar will be right by the C4 we pick up north of here. And uh, we're not lucky. 
might be by the elevator, so not give up hope yet. Yep, or in uh, Bison's room. Otherwise, we're going to have to go check some other locations. And by that, I mean, uh, well, actually, at that point, if there really weren't any left, uh, Casino's done enough deduction that we know where it would be. It would be on the, uh, by the turrets in the left room. Okay. It's not looking good. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Uh, bison room. We go in bison room. Here we go, bison room. Come to daddy. And... <laughs> Well, you might be able to tell what was in Bison's room. Oh boy. So, not vent filler though. Okay, well then that means it should be the one with the turrets. Turret filler, so I can pick up some extra C4 here as well. Oh, actually, no I can't. I'm already full on C4. Well, what do you know? Realize you were limited. Uh... Wait, well, uh, now we know all, all four pillar locations, so I just have to clean up now. Do what you gotta do. Uh, I believe what I would use is a chaff grenade here to walk on the left electric floor. Uh, I just go right back to the uh, same way I came in, which does do damage to me, but uh, okay. the left side does save some time compared to weaving in and out, but it's fairly minor. Well, I wonder because, uh, okay, I wonder if, uh, if it saves time, is that even the right item configuration? I wonder if it does save time, or if the time you save not picking up the chaffs. Uh, I guess the chaffs are... You need the chaff. We already know you need the chaff. No, I mean the extra chaffs. You don't need the, You don't need to do that. No, you, no. you have enough for everything. Unless you're using... Are you using three chaff in, uh... Oh, you know what? I, I have a different strategy for stage 11. That's, that's what I'm... That's what's confusing me. Yeah, because I, I do two in stage 11 and... So... That's that's where the division is. I will be right back. I need to uh, take a little break. So I'm just setting up the C4. When I set up the last C4 uh, on the last pillar location, uh, I'll get a call, and then I'm going to blow up the C4. Alerts do not matter at this point because when I get the C4 cutscene, uh, it will uh, just reset my alerts anyway. So I now have to step by the elevator, and there we go. Colonel's gonna tell us to blow up the C4. And there it goes. Okay, now everything is gonna be falling apart, and there's a lot of fire. Uh, but we're not too worried about that. Uh, you know, I'm sure, you know, Snake Dangers practically is real name, so... Uh, and, uh, you know, just like Pyro Bison, uh, we love to immolate ourselves, so after I get out of the elevator, I'm gonna walk into the fire. Uh, you can see it in a bit here. Uh, it allows us to skip walking all the way around the elevator. Walk into the fire and uh, kind of flop over to the exit. And 
that should be stage nine. Uh, here I believe McBride is saying again that he believes Chris is the uh, traitor. And we receive another uh, videotape from the general saying that he still is threatening to fire Metal Gear, so we have to go blow up Metal Gear. And as we come out of the uh, power plant, turns out Jimmy managed to escape with the help of another surviving Delta Force operative that unfortunately did not make uh, did not make it through the escape unscathed. Um, but then... And Jimmy's saying, oh, can I repent for my creation of Metal Gear? Snake says yes, but then... Uh, turns out Jimmy's handcuffs were booby-trapped, and they blow him up right in front of us. So that's... Uh, it's very unfortunate for Jimmy. Uh, he may have needed to use his pounds not that many times. Alright, and so if you remember those mortars that were shooting at us before, uh, we just call in the Air Force and blow them up. I mean, really. Isn't that the solution we want for everything, but... Uh, fortunately, these guys don't hang around uh, to blow up our next boss, but, uh, you know, uh, they're busy. They're in the Air Force. I'm sure, I'm sure they have other stuff to blow up. Right, so another, another trip to the minefield. comes after that, that scene there. Right, so our next boss is going to be uh, a helicopter, the same helicopter that we saw in uh, the cutscene before where Metal Gear fired the nuke. Uh, we need, we're gonna battle it with grenades. Uh, as little sense as that makes, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we want as many grenades as possible, and hopefully, uh, and, oh, and here it looks like it's Chris getting into the helicopter, but, uh, we'll find out it's not Chris, but, uh, uh, oh, and I'm forgetting my stream delay, but, it does look like Chris gets in the helicopter, but it isn't Chris. Now, talk about the helicopter a bit. So the helicopter has several things it can do. It can either shoot the guns, uh, shoot missiles, uh, or it can screen trend. It can it can transition where it is uh, by going left or right. And I think now and there did it. Uh, well, we'll see it soon. Um, so, the helicopter can go left or right and end up on the sides of the screen instead of the top. That's uh, much worse. Uh, it's harder to hit. Uh, you have to time the grenades differently. I just realized I didn't have any rations equipped. That would have been really bad if I had died there, but uh, we made it through. <laughs> uh, that, was a, that was a little bit of a close call, honestly. Uh... Would have been funny if you if you're able to hear on the stream me uh, lamenting how awful that uh, helicopter had gone if I had died. But uh, that was a decent helicopter. Uh, ideally, it would just stay at the top of the screen and you would just blow it up at the top because that is where it's vulnerable for the most amount of time. But uh, uh, what can you do? So it turns out, after the helicopter crashes, it wasn't Chris in the helicopter. In fact, it was uh, it was Sophie, uh, the general's assistant. You can see her in the background of the uh, 
videos the general sent out. Uh, and she she gets the drop on us initially, but then we uh, turn things around when the helicopter explodes. And uh, she tells us how the general uh, the general changed over time, and he became less invested, or, or or I don't know. She used to love the general, but now he's a different man. And yada yada, tragic stuff. Tragic stuff once again. Uh, and such tragic, such tragedy. Snake's like, I'm, I'm gonna spare you. Well, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah, because Salt Snake is clearly, he's clearly on Black Chamber. That's why he's sparing her. No, he, he's playing the long game. Uh, so here we are, stage. Well, this stage. Oh, this is boy, stage this 11. Oh, boy, this stage. Who's counting at this point? I, so, I, actually, uh, I actually tried to go through this stage casually the other day. I realized <laughs> I don't know how to beat it normally. <laughs> A lot more back and forth. Skipping some upcoming electric floors with uh, nicely timed explosions and uh, some awkward hitboxes on the electric floors. I really gotta love. Um, my favorite part of this strategy is that slide, slide into the damage, and then you flop onto the floor. I love it that really, part. It really makes no sense, but. Thank God for it. Blow up a few electricity panels. With also very thankful that uh, the Nikita's actually in this stage and we can use it. Yes, because we skipped it before, now we pick it up. Uh, and here I'm going to use the last chaff I would have because the client strategies are weird and don't make sense. But using the chaff here causes the camera to not see me, and then guards don't appear in this area that I'm running through here. Uh, alternatively, you could use a stun grenade, or you could just not care and just YOLO. <laughs> yeah, just go, just go for it, as uh, they say in Beautiful Joe. Uh, okay, I hope I'm on the right time frame. Uh, so this electric floor that we're running over. Uh, we just disabled with the Nikita beforehand. Well, that was what those shots were for. Well, oh, that's right, it's a door, it's not an elevator. I always get that mixed up. And so, uh, now we're gonna ride a 50 floor elevator down. Because we are in the, uh, remained... What's remaining of the base from Metal Gear 1, so we're taking down some long elevators because the original elevator leading to Metal Gear and Metal Gear 1 was 100 floors, so we're going to be going down 100 floors in total. Well, there's not much to do in this elevator, unfortunately. I have a question for you since we have some time. Uh, what's that? So, what brought you to this game? Uh, so the audience can know. What what brought you into running this game and being interested in playing this game uh, in a speedrunning context? This was, this was my first speed game, uh, so basically, I, I've always been I've been interested in speedrunning for a long time, but I didn't know what game to start with, uh, and I I kind of I think I saw I saw maybe LCC's run or something, and I thought this game looks really cool. I didn't think about speedrunning it yet. But then I, uh, I remember I, I was looking for more games to uh, buy because I I buy a lot of retro games, and uh, so I decided uh, like when I was just looking through a list of games to buy. Uh, wow, that was unfortunate. I'll see something awkward happen soon. Uh, anyway, I bought this game. 
initially uh, just to play it. Uh, but I ended up really loving the way it controls, and and I figured this would be a good first speed game. Um, and I just started speedrunning. I, I learned the route by watching the video, and, and the rest is history. I mistake. Unpunished. Oh! 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 Just, uh, okay, that's a little too close for comfort. Oops. Oh, nice, you're picking up those grenades. Oh! <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just gonna... I'm, I, you know, I'm just gonna use a ration, uh... That's a good idea. <laughs> you know, I think that could, uh, that could, that could possibly, uh, come up soon, so, uh, let's just, uh, make sure that's not a problem. Normally, uh, you can just walk through that one area with the mines and, uh, do a repeat performance of Meryl's embarrassing, uh, mine walking scene, but, uh, Not, uh, I didn't, didn't quite make it there. Nice timed stun throw <clears throat> to uh, prevent them from hitting you. Now we have to do this faithful trip through the uh, laser room. Uh, and by the way, if I do set off a laser here, uh, it turns it into a gas room that you can't escape. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> if you get gassed... Uh... Uh, you are dead for sure. Like you can't, you can't ever escape from that room. Uh, so you just have to redo it. So we don't want that to happen. So what's even lamer is uh, even if you pick up the gas mask and like wait out the whole alert and evasion, the gas doesn't get removed and you can't escape. So really reinforces how useless the gas mask is. Really, I thought you could escape. Nope. Because I know, I, I know, wanted, like I wanted to test that for like marathon safety. Like, okay, if if I accidentally trip this, can I still get out? Nope, I'm just stuck in there. Oh yeah, uh, I'm coming up on it. Uh, should I just go see the corpse of the original Metal Gear? Yeah, we got here? time. We got time. We got to show the Easter egg. Unfortunately, I forgot about it until just now. We could have had it as a marathon incentive, man. Wow. Uh, we'll show it here. Uh, if I recall, I haven't gone to that room in a long time, but I think it's just outside the elevator, the last elevator. Oh, shit. Okay, that was a little tight. Uh, I punched an extra time, you'll, you'll see. And, uh, I was worried about that guard. Yeah, that was a bit tight. But it's all good. So here we are in the Metal Gear hangar. Uh, I believe... You see Metal Gear right here. There it is in all its glory. Uh, here it is. That's the, So that's the new Metal Gear. Uh gonna see there and uh, then we're gonna go see the old Metal Gear and it's uh 
one might say it's a fair bit less impressive. But you know, for its time, uh, the technology at the time, you know, uh, is, is very impressive. Yeah, very impressive uh, legs on that Metal Gear for sure. Old stationary. It's on the left side of the uh, elevator. So here's the here on my screen, but and you'll see it soon. There's the uh, ruins of the old uh, old base, and uh, there's the wreck of the old Metal Gear. You can see it's Gatling guns that I, I'm not sure I ever actually used. <laughs> actually, still intact. No, it did nothing. <laughs> the only thing that hurt you in that room, the the laser turret things. But yeah, if you do call Colonel, you actually do reminisce a little bit about it. Of course, it's reminiscing in Japanese, so... But, it's a nice little Easter egg, nice touch. I just grabbed a ration. An extra ration. I call this ration the Coward's Ration. So real men do not need to pick it up. Uh, I'm tiny baby cowards. So I, do not want to, I, I don't want to die in Viper. I somehow waste four rations, so I'm just picking up a I'm picking up an extra ration. That just passed the uh, entrance to Viper's room, and here we are actually going to fight Viper, uh, last member of Black Chamber. He has uh, kidnapped Chris, uh, which you'll and he's see. showing his mechanical arm that he's so mad about. So this fight's a bit weird if you've never seen it before. It's kind of confusing, but he uh, spawns these random tripwires. Uh, and once they disappear fully, then they're active and you run into them, they explode. Uh, but whenever he raises his hand, they uh, get reactivated. And so the goal is just to follow him back and forth. Yeah, I agree. In situations like this, because the trip wires do crazy damage. I think it's the same damage as a uh, like an explosive, like a Nikita shot or a grenade. It's like half your health. It's it's not insignificant. So if um, you can't keep up with him and you mess up your movement, the fight can get hairy pretty quick. And I'm talking about Harry Mason. Which we'll see, tomorrow. we'll be seeing him tomorrow from Couch Man. Uh, so here we rescue Chris uh, from Viper as the whole place explodes. Uh, Chris is all like, Oh, I'm ashamed that I, you know, got caught by Viper. Uh, I mean, you know, it's not like he had an entire army uh, with him or anything. But, uh, you know, Snake's just going to say, uh, uh, it's fine. Uh, it's no problem. Uh, if you could, uh, if you could just get us a car to get out of here, uh, after I blow up Metal Gear, uh, you know, that we'll, we'll, we'll all be, uh, we'll be fine. We'll be square. We'll be square. Save your survivor's guilt for later. Okay, stage 12, and this is really like the, uh, what everything was building up to in terms of your uh, routing for grenades, C4, and mines, and everything else. I'm just going to pick up a few extra supplies. Normally, you would skip uh, a couple of these, maybe. Uh, but I'm just going to pick everything up because I may as well just be safe. It's not likely I'll die, but... Maybe. You haven't happen. died yet, so why not? Why... Why have it happen here? This is the last place where, like, you really could die. So. So here it is, big old Metal Gear. And who's that on top? Why, the general.
kind so of tiny two, up there, but yeah. there's two phases to a uh, Metal Gear here. There's the walking phase and then the body phase. We have to take out the legs first, and uh, it can be a bit tricky because you need to make Metal Gear drop the foot quickly and also not like move the foot away from the explosion so you have to time your plants and your movement properly so you can uh properly manipulate the shadow uh, i'm doing a guaranteed strat where if you run against that bottom of the screen uh, metal gear will always stop when it comes back up uh it's a little slower than if you run around in circles and get it to drop early but uh, it is at least consistent. Hey, I, I like consistency. It's good stuff. But we're not done yet. It's not over yet. Got to take out the body. And unlike previous 2D Metal Gears, this Metal Gear really takes it on the chin quite a bit. Yep, all 40 of them. So this fight can be pretty random as far as what <clears throat> Metal Gear decides to do. So I'm blowing up. Uh, I'm using the Nikita to get the little circular thing that comes out. Uh, and the grenades are blowing up a gun turret. Uh, grenades do very little damage. Uh, but blowing up the, uh, the little circular thing that comes up, uh, does a lot of damage, so you wanna, you wanna try and get that as soon as possible. And ideally, uh, it pops up very quickly, rather than you seeing the, uh, floating UAV ciphers shooting at you. Alright, very good, now we're just gonna move on to the missile phase. Which is random. Here's at random, so you never know when you're going to get the missiles. Uh, they may never appear in the fight at all, actually, which is a bit weird, but... Ideal. <coughs> Ideally, you just never see the missile ever, and then fight is a cinch. Uh, so I'm actually going to... <laughs> not use grenades past my, like, I'm gonna keep eight grenades because the last phase of Metal Gear, which should be coming up here soon, uh, can, uh, it'll die in at a maximum eight grenades, so I always keep eight grenades at the end here. Uh, if you like, you don't need to do that, but, uh, I prefer to just to be sure I don't need to go pick up any more grenades in the last part. Nicely done. That's Metal Gear, folks. Yep, and here the general... The general crawls out of the broken husk of Metal Gear and says, wait, 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 wait. Actually, actually, I'm not the villain the whole time. Actually, the U.S. government is the villain. And uh, Snake yeah. is like, oh, well, how It's like, and all the information is on this disc. Two characters that are off screen for the whole game are actually manipulating all the events in Ghost Babble. The conspiracy thickens. But that's not it yet, because Blackheart's Viper has one more trick up his sleeve. A little remote that causes satellites in space to cause explosions. So Metal Gear Nuclear actually, explosions. actually had a, a satellite uplink. So when it reaches the surface, uh, it can cause satellites to shoot nukes all over the place. So we don't want that to happen. And uh, there, in that uh, Kodak cutscene with uh, McBride. Turns out McBride was the traitor the whole time. It wasn't. It wasn't Chris at all. 
He was the fifth member of Black Chamber. Bum bum bum. 200 IQ plot, and Kojima didn't even write this one. This was entirely uh, Fukushima, who co-wrote uh, one in MGS one and two. It's the most grounded of the three different timelines that uh, sprout to the first time of your game. Because Wait, you can actually shoot through. that guy while he's uh? No, no, you can't. Oh, I you're just doing. I was like, what? Oh <clears throat> That'd be great. Yeah, so Viper spawns in multiple locations um, in, in this uh, arena platform. And if you stand on one side of the arena, that'll deny him from spawning on that side and so on. But you can't really determine what part the arena he's spawning on. He could spawn in multiple locations, even if you deny a few. Uh, oh shit. Okay, well, we're coming up on time. Should I say what time? Yep. Or no. Well, I guess time. <laughs> 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 I, I figured you would do it on the stream or something, but yeah, no, that. There we go. <laughs> <clears throat> nice. That is a 119.26 RTA, supposedly. We've defeated Viper. His plot has come to an end. Uh, we saved the world again. Uh, you know, as you do. Uh, I think here Sophie tells us that uh, she's going to rebuild the country that we were in. That, you know, got taken She's going to keep on fighting the good fight for her ethnic minority. Pretty much. Hey, uh, you know, Rao Rao fight the power, you know. Chris comes by in, in, uh, in a jeep here. He says, hey, I got a jeep. Let's get out of here. And this one actually has keys in it. Who would have thought? Yes, either that or unlike Otacon, uh, Chris is very handy with uh, hot wiring cars. Uh, so in this last codec conversation uh, we have here on up uh, all of the uh, all all the plot threads are wrapped up uh everyone walks away happy uh, you know happily ever yeah <laughs> happy happy wanted criminal from the u.s government i mean you know it could be worse you're right it could be worse and i think snake says uh that he's going to go back to the u.s and take down those bad guys, you know? It's He's gonna, gonna get to the bottom of the truth of what's really happening. <clears throat> uh, but unfortunately, uh, this storyline never continued, but I would have loved to see a GBA Ghost Babel sequel or something, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Yep, that's the, the pain. The phantom pain that fans of this game have that uh, there was never a GBA sequel because that would have been uh, that would have been kick ass. Imagine the color palette increase. <clears throat> and L and R, just L and R, would make a huge difference to the uh, menuing in this game. All right, so uh, I don't know if you why I should cut. Well, you, do you have anyone you want to thank or any any uh, closing words since we're done with this uh, run? We have a few minutes. We could see what the uh, IGT is. All right, yeah. I mean, I'd like to thank... Uh, I'd like to thank, well, you, Plywood. You know, I think your run was the one I watched the most in order to actually learn this game. 
first time. Uh, you know, you help me out with some of the uh, strats I've I've uh, learned since first running this. And uh, you know, shout out to LCC. He used to have a uh, world record for uh, plywood. Uh, absolutely destroyed the uh, world record for this game. And, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for me. I'll be back tomorrow with, uh, Silent Hill UFO percent. That's gonna be a good one to see. <clears throat> Casino runs, uh, aka Couchman. Maybe you should explain to everyone why I'm calling you both Casino Coin and Couchman. I'm using them interchanger interchangeably. So I signed up for Discord with Couchman, and I signed up for Twitch with Casino Coin, and then I was like, well, I'd like to change my name on Discord. And, uh, as far as I know, although you can change your name on Discord, uh, one, I, I never bothered to learn how, and two, uh, it doesn't stay with you if you switch servers or, or join a new server, so... I uh, didn't bother changing my name on Discord, so uh, now I have two names. There you go. There you go. Gee, Bill, how come your mom wants to have two names? Alright, coming up here. Dai Katana GBC. I, I hear that game's actually not that bad. The Dai Katana Game Boy Color game, which is, uh,. Quite different, of course, from yeah. PC version. Yeah. <laughs> All right, forty-two twenty-four. Well, you get to hear it before you see it, but uh, IGT. Oh shit! I hit the A button. Well, it was forty-two twenty-four for me. Uh, thirty-six, 36 alerts and five rations. Codename Pigeon. Which uh, not not the worst, you know. All right, so I believe we have Aerithrum coming up here with uh, the Immortal on NES. Well, I'll just uh, I'll just scoot out of here. Thanks for the run, dude. Well done, GG. We are going to, as Couchman said, transition over to the Immortal. All right, Aerithrum. Thanks for watching me, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the marathon. Thank you.